tonight I'm teaching on the prayer of faith. So with me, the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. One of the greatest ways to please God is to operate by faith. A life of faith honors God and pleases God. That's why Hebrews 11, 6 says, He that comes to God must believe that God is and that is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. For without faith, it is difficult. Impossible! What did you say? Impossible. So without faith, pleasing God is a forgotten issue. Without faith, we just cannot please God. Many times, we want to please God by doing right things, wow. which is very good, you know, by not cursing our neighbors, you know, by not cheating, by not, not involved in immorality. All those things are very good. Uh, they, if we do that, that pleases God. But more than anything else, what pleases God more than anything else is faith. Yes, yes. After we have done all those good things, you know, like paying our tithe, giving our offerings, helping our neighbors, not lying, you know, not fighting, working love to everybody. If we still don't work in faith, we end up not pleasing God. So after all those good things which we should always do, we must come back to the basic principle of faith in God. Faith pleases God. And when we know that faith pleases God, and we want to please God, guess what? We will live by faith. We will walk by faith. When you know what somebody likes, what pleases them, you want to be in their good books, what do you do? You do what pleases them. <laughs> Me and my wife, for example, I've married her now for almost 28 years. I know what pleases her. I know what she likes. I know what she does not like. She likes me to open the door for her when she's not entering into the car. She enjoys it. And I do it for her. I do it for her. In fact, just a few days ago, we were at a, at, a, at a grocery store. We came out and I opened the door for her. One man came to us and the man said, Oh, you are doing this for your wife? He said, I'm married now for about 34 years. The man said, It works. Yes, yes. Yes. Like, well, okay, thank you for saying that it works. It works. She likes it, so I do it for her, and she's pleased with me. Now, the same way with God. When you know that God likes faith, then walk by faith to please Him. If you don't know that God likes faith, and then you may not feel see the need to walk by faith. But if you know that God likes faith, you want to please God, you walk by faith. So when we walk with God by faith, we make God happy with us. We please Him. But the Bible says that Hebrews 11, 6, For without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if we don't walk by faith, we will not be able to please God. Let me ask you all this question, which I, have, I know the answer, but let me ask you. How many of you here love to please God? Amen. Amen. I know you all love to please God. And since God loves faith, God is a faith God. God himself is a God of faith. So, when you do what God likes, which is to walk by faith, you please him. God becomes happy with you. Your faith in God pleases him. And so, the prayer of faith is a very important type of prayer, not just because it guarantees our answers, but also because it brings delight to God. It pleases God. The prayer of faith, which is only one type of prayer, there are many kinds of prayer in the Bible, not less than 10 different types of prayer. But the prayer of faith, it does not only guarantee our answer from God, it also guarantees that we please God, that we delight God's heart, that God is pleased with us because we are working by faith. The prayer of faith is based on the integrity of God and His Word. The prayer of faith says God can be trusted. The prayer of faith says God is truthful. God is not a liar. God is not a deceiver. God can be relied upon to keep his word. The prayer of faith is based upon the integrity of God and his word. John 17 verse 17 says, Sanctify them by thy truth, thy word, is truth. Yes, yes. So the word of God is truth. 
So you and I pray our faith based on our unknowing that the word of God is truth. The word of God is not just our consolation. It's not just to appease us. Not just to make us happy. It is the truth. The word of God is not just to soothe us and make us feel good. No. The word of God is the truth. That's what Jesus said there. It is based upon this fact that we can have the prayer of faith, believing God, because God can never lie. That's right. In Psalm 119, verse 160, the Bible says, Psalm 119, verse 160, Thy word is true from the beginning. From the beginning. So the word of God is not suddenly true today. The word of God has been true from the beginning. Thy word is true from the beginning. And every one of thy righteous judgments endure it forever. The word of God has been true from the beginning. When is the beginning? The beginning. When did the beginning begin? It began in the beginning. Far, 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 far in the past. So, the word of God has been true from the beginning. From the time the word of God began to exist, it began to exist as truth. God's word did not develop truth with time. No. So it does not lose truth with time. No. The word of God is true from the beginning and is true now and is true forever. Yes, yes, yes. It's based upon the truth of the word of God that we can pray the prayer of faith and expect God to answer. Yes. Psalm 119, look at verse 89. Psalm 119, verse 89. It says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled where? In heaven. In heaven. Forever, O Lord. Forever. It's not for two weeks. It's not for ten months. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled or finalized in heaven. Observe, it is not settled in the White House. No. Settled in heaven. Not settled in the Kremlin. No. Settled in heaven. Why heaven? Heaven is the headquarters of the universe. The whole universe revolves around heaven. Heaven where God dwells. The throne of God is the headquarters of the whole creation. And the word of God is forever settled or finalized in heaven. Which means this word is not only true it has been authenticated, it has been validated, it has been authorized, and it has been finalized in the headquarters of the universe. Hey! Yeah. So nothing can change it. This word of God is forever. Might be a special forever. This is not just a thing for 10 million years. It's not just for 100 billion centuries. Forever. Thy word is settled or finalized in heaven. It is based on the truthfulness of God's word, on the integrity of God's word, that we can pray the prayer of faith and expect to get an answer. Because the word of God we are praying, believing, is forever settled in heaven. Before Lucifer was created, this world was settled in heaven. Before the devil was ever made, this world, the word of God is senior to the devil. When the devil comes out, I will tell you some rats. I have a source older than you. Yeah. I have the word of the living God. Hallelujah! The word of God is older than the devil. So, he can't trip us on anything because we know the word of the living God. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen, my Lord. And when the devil will have been confined to the lake of fire, the word of God will still be the word of God. Amen. So, before the devil was the word, after the devil will still be the word. The word of God is forever finalized. No devil, no power of darkness can shake the authority of the word of God. What am I saying? I'm saying this for us to realize the importance of faith in the word of God. This word of God is forever in heaven settled. Look at Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 17. The counsel of God is immutable because God cannot lie. The counsel of God is unchanging because God can never, never lie. Hebrews 6, 17 says, Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability 
or your changeableness of his counsel confirmed in it by an oath. So the counsel of God, the word of God is immutable. It is unchangeable. And to confirm that, God confirmed him by an oath that he made to Abraham. He said, he said, he said Abraham, I'm going to bless you. With blessing, I will bless you. I swear by myself. That's really right. Right. And I'm going to bless you. There was nothing more than God for God to swear by. So God said, I swear by myself. I'm going to bless you, Abraham, and everyone that works by faith like you, I will bless you. So, the, the word of God, God's counsel is unchangeable, is immutable. Look at the, the next verse, verse 18 of Hebrews chapter 6. The next verse, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18, wherein God, okay, said so verse 18, that by two immutable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie. A God can never lie. We might have strong consolation or strong confidence. Yes, yes. Who have fled for refuge Amen. to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Yes, Lord, yes. The word of God sets a hope before us. Yes. What it's saying is that through God's immutableness, through God's constant nature, true nature, we can lay hold on the hope that we have in the word of God, knowing that God can never fail us. Knowing that God is trustworthy, we can lay hold on what God has said. Thank you, Father. God is immutable. His word is unchanging. This is just basis for the prayer of faith. Because you see something, doubting God and God's word displeases him. Doubting God and God's word displeases him and he becomes grieved by that. Now when you believe God, you please him. When you doubt God, you displease him. It happened in the Old Testament. God had brought the Jews out of the land of Egypt by a mighty hand. Remember the story? How God sent the death angel and king of the first one of, of, of Pharaoh and all the Egyptians. They had to let the people of God go out of their land by force. They left there with plenty gold and silver. Because of the Red Sea, God came from heaven by His power, opened the Red Sea for them. They passed through the middle of the Red Sea by the act of God's might and power. Yes, they kept on on the journey to, to, to Canada. When the time came, they needed water, needed food. God gave them manna from heaven. Upon all that, they began to doubt God still. They said, You know what, Moses? We have eaten this manna for so many years. Uh, let us now eat flesh. Give us flesh. We want meat in this wilderness. And Moses said, The Lord can give you meat. They said, How? How can God give us meat in this wilderness? Uh, the the, the, the welfare for heaven, the manna, yes. But, but now we need flesh. We need quails. We need something like fish. We need something you can chew and eat more than this manna. And they said, God, can God do it for us? They doubted God. Oh. Moses said, watch and see what God will do for you. God will do a miracle for you. He will open the heaven and give you flesh to eat in this wilderness. But their act of doubting God displeased God. Look at Psalm 78 and verse 32. Psalm 78 and verse 32. And say that when we doubt God, we displease Him. The prayer of faith refuse to doubt God. Psalm 78 verse 32 For all these they sinned still and believed not from his wondrous works. They see that any upon all the wonders did for them. So shift to verse 41 and 42. Verse 41 and 42 of this same Psalm 78 Look at the consequence of their doubting him and not believing. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited him, verse 42. When they limited him, he said, they remembered not his hand, nor, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Because they doubted God, they grieved his heart. God was not happy. They limited him and they fed him to their unbelief. What am I saying? And so when you doubt the word of God, you vex him. When you doubt God's power, you limit him, you don't please him. Something does not please God. But the prayer of faith 
It leaves God based on the word of God before you even see answers manifested. The prophet is based on Mark 11, 24. Let's read Mark 11, verse 24. This is a verse I want all our people here to know by heart. Let us look at Mark 11, 24. Repeat after me, it's on the screen. Therefore, therefore, I say unto you, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, what things soever you desire, when you pray, when you pray, when you pray, pray believe that you receive them, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. You shall have them. Now, follow me again. Therefore, therefore, I say unto you, say unto you, Jesus speaking, yes. what things soever you desire, whatever things you so desire. When you pray, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. One more time. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. The words of Jesus. Are speaking right here. If your Bible is a written edition, these words I read. These are the very words of Jesus. Please keep your eyes on those words. Therefore, Christ says, Therefore, Jesus says to us, This is not Pastor talking now. This is not Apostle Paul talking. This is not Jude talking. This is not even King David. But this is Jesus Christ, God the Son, talking. He says, Therefore, I, Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, say unto you, Therefore, I, Jesus, the Son of God, say unto you, that what things soever you desire, what things soever you desire, whatever you desire, whatever you desire, is it healing? Is it victory in any area of your life? Whatever you desire, is it a new job? Whatever you desire. Whatever you desire, the, the check is blank. Whatever you desire. This is Jesus talking about you. This is Christ talking. This is not man. God is talking to you. The one whose word can never fail is talking to you right now. To me. He says, what things soever you desire. And you, you, you just say in Hebrews that he can never lie. There's not play with words. Whatsoever you desire, whatever it is. Now, whatever in English actually means whatever. There's nothing outside whatever. Whatever you desire, when you pray for it, believe that you receive them and then you shall have them. Whatever you desire, when you pray, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and then you shall have them. Thank you, Father. Amen. You desire X, Y. And when you pray for X, Y, Christ says, believe that you receive X, Y, then you shall have X, Y. Amen. He didn't say when you pray for X, Y, wait to receive first. Then you believe you receive. No. no. That's upside down. Yeah. When you pray for X, Y, this could be healing. It could be victory. It could be whatever you desire from God. Believe that you receive them and. See what and? So the end means what comes after end is to come after what comes before end. Amen. So, when you pray for whatever, believe that you receive them, then, and only then, shall you receive them. That's the prayer of faith. Man. The prayer of faith, ask God for something, and believe that you receive it when you pray. Remember it says, what's the is that when you pray, so you believe when you pray, not when you receive. You have to believe what time? When you pray. You have to believe when you pray, not when you receive. Because when you pray and when you receive could take six months. 
could take two hours, could take ten days, could take even one year. But you have to believe when you pray, not when you receive. When you believe when you pray, and you believe you receive, Christ who can never lie says, then you shall have them. This is the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith, based on the word of God, makes the request known to God, and believe they receive before they see it manifested. The prayer of faith does not wait to see first before they believe that they receive. The prayer of faith, believe they receive first before they see it manifested. And this story about this little boy who was sleeping in his little room one night and there was a big thunderstorm began to rattle and it was so loud the little boy got scared in his room. He said, Dad, Dad, I'm scared in my room. And he, his father didn't want to get up from his own bed in his room. So from his room he yelled, Hey, son, God is with you. He will take care of you. Never be afraid. So there was silence everywhere for a while. Because the dad didn't want to get up from his bed to go and meet the boy in his room. He said, son, God is with you in your room. He will take care of you. After some silence, the boy yelled back, Dad, I know that God is with me. But I want somebody with some skin on them. <laughs> now, now, now. So, at times we are like that. We know God has answered, we want to see somebody with skin on them. Then we believe that we receive. The boy knew that God was there. He said, I want to see someone with skin on them. Before I can really believe that God is with me. Dad, I know God is with me, but I want to see with my eyes. So when it's king on them, then I really know that God is with me. We are like that many times. Yeah. But the prayer of faith does not wait to see someone with the skin on them before they believe. <laughs> we don't see someone with the skin on them, the prayer of faith believes all the same before they get to see the person with the skin on them. How many of the times we have prayed the prayer of faith, we are believing God for, for healing, or for whatever we're trusting God for, I will say, Lord, I believe, but God, I want to see someone with a skin on them before I truly believe that I really believe. <laughs> That's what we do. You know, then, when, when, when we pray, for we are praying for, for healing, maybe we have a, a pain in our knee, and we are praying for healing. We've been praying for, say, Lord, I believe, but you know what? I want to, to feel the pain gone. Then I will know I am really healed. But what that is, you want to see someone with a skin on them before you believe. That's what that means. But the prayer of faith does not wait to see someone with a skin on them, but simply believes because that's what the word of God says. Say it to hey. The prayer of faith does not wait to see or feel before they believe. The prayer of faith believes simply on the integrity of the word of God. Because God can never lie. Amen. Because God is trustworthy. Yes, yes. Because God is faithful. Yes. Therefore, I believe God's word. Even though I have not yet seen somebody with a skin on them, I believe that I receive. Say the to that. Glory to God Most High. It's wonderful to bring you the word of God today. But for you to receive the blessings that God has in mind for you, you need to make Jesus the Lord of your life. So if you have never made Jesus the Lord of your life before, or you have walked away from the Lord, I'm here today by the help of the Holy Spirit to help you get back to Christ. So wherever you are watching this right now, you want to give your heart to Jesus. You want to make Jesus Lord of your life. I'll lead you now in a short prayer of faith to make Jesus Lord and King over your life. So right now, pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart, Jesus. Save my soul, O oh Lord. 
make me a child of the living God. With my mouth I confess that Jesus is Lord over my life. Jesus is mine and I am His forever. Amen and Amen. Glory to God. If you pray that prayer with me right now by faith in God's word, you have been saved. Simple, isn't it? Yes, Jesus did all the hard part. That you and I might by faith receive his blessings and be saved. And right now, if you need healing in your physical body, I want to pray now and believe God for your healing right now. For we serve a healing God. He is a healing God. Wherever you are aching in your body right now, you, whatever sickness you may be going through right now, and you believe God for healing today, stretch forth your hand right now by faith toward the screen as we pray in faith, believe in God for His healing power to come upon you right now and to set you free. We serve a healing Jesus. Right now, Father, I rebuke every sickness and disease in the bodies of these ones who are releasing their faith today. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, Jesus makes you whole. Now receive it by faith and rebuke the hands of the devil of your body. Satan, loose them, let them go. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed now. Receive it by faith and give God praise and glory for it. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your healing hand released now upon your people. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. I believe God's power has touched you today. You know why? Because He loves you with an everlasting love. And by faith in His Word, you receive Him today as your Lord and Savior. You receive His healing power into your physical body. I tell you what, God wants to do greater things in your life. Amen. Glory to God. So my advice to you will be this, examine your body today and see what God has done in your life, in your body, in your soul, in your spirit, and let us hear from you the good news of what God has done in your life. Around the world, we receive testimonies of people being saved by the power of God, people being healed by the power of God, people being delivered by the power of God, and you can also give your testimony of God's power in your life. The Lord bless you. And remember, send us your testimony to the address on the screen. You can either send us an email, or you can send us a mail, or you could just go online and let us know what God has done in your life. The Lord bless you and keep it till I come your way same time next week. Remember that Jesus loves you, and we love you too. God bless you. Bye-bye.